The first time I saw the Sicaros Prime of Friend was using it and I thought to myself, damn, that's such a cool looking secondary weapon. I built it, I played with it, it was a pretty great experience, but time passes and things change. The question I have today, can the Sicaros Prime still pack a punch or not? Hey guys, welcome back, as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this secondary weapon. As per the usual, I'm gonna have a cheap build, something affordable that most Tenno should be able to build, but rest assured, we also have the quote-unquote endgame setup with a crazy ribbon. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player-friendly approach. I like to take my time and explain whatever I feel is relevant for newer players. So in case you're a vet, and you already know most of this stuff, please, bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Sicaros Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. The Sicaros Prime is a pretty straightforward secondary weapon. It's hit scan, which is fantastic. You press your trigger and instant damage on your target, but it has a semi-automatic trigger. Now, you can either go shot by shot action, like so, or what you can do is bind your fire to your scroll wheel and you get this rate of fire, this would be maximum rate of fire on modded. Now there's one more solution, you can make a macro, but unfortunately the stance on macros is, and I quote, you do so at your own risk. And if you think I'm exaggerating with anything, <laughs> link in the cards right now. The problem with the Sicaros Prime lies in usability. It fires three shots, free, it consumes three bullets per each and every single shot, and it has that climbing recoil. Your magazine is 24, so effectively you're gonna be getting eight shots before you need to reload. The problem begins when you mix in that climbing recoil. Take a look at the 15 meter accuracy test. One, two, three. The first bullet is nowhere near bullet number two and bullet number three. This can be the difference between one bullet making a headshot and the other two bullets basically missing your target. In the past, this used to be a bigger issue because you had to use steady hands, but that would have meant a compromise. You would have had to give up on some damage to put it on the weapon. But now we got the weapon an excellent slot, so it no longer feels like such a big compromise. Other than that, the weapon is 100%. Solid. So let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity, 60 out of 60. And if your Sicaros Prime comes with only 30 out of 30, jump into actions, plug in that Auto King Catalyst, double your mod capacity. 20 plat for this one, you can grind it from Nightwave, you can get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie, and some events in Warframe also feature an Auto King Catalyst as a possible or guaranteed reward. For my two cents, it's worth modding the Sicaros Prime, even though it's a little bit outdated right now. Now my example has 8 Forma. Why? I honestly don't remember. But for the build I'm recommending you, 4 should be enough, 5 if you have a Riven. The accuracy on this one is 25, and I'm gonna show you exactly what Steady Hands does on the weapon before I show you Multi-Shot and Magnum Force. Yes, so Steady Hands on the weapon, you saw how the bullets were all spread out. In the Weapon Excel slot, make sure to unlock it and put in Steady Hands. Same 15 meter test. And my friends, that is a whole lot better than before. All of them should be a headshot in the 15 meter range, of course. Now let's try to nuke that accuracy with Magnum Force. This is a pretty solid mod, 165% damage for your secondaries, considering that Hornet Strike gives you 220 is pretty good. But the problem is the weapon kind of becomes a bit of a shotgun. Let me show you exactly what I mean in the same 15 meter test with Steady Hand. You see that? all over the place not really fantastic definitely not and there are some that say hey listen give up on steady hands and go for targeting subsystems i mean it would make sense right because targeting subsystems offers you plus accuracy the problem lies in how accuracy is calculated in warframe long story short 30 percent is nowhere near enough to get you your accuracy back right so i hit the guy i hit guy guys hit and i go for the same 15 meter test look at that Still pretty much all over the place. I simply cannot recommend Magnum Force. Hopefully D will see this and know that targeting subsystems doesn't do a whole lot and it needs a slight buff. And by slight I mean from 30% you just go to like 150%. That should be good enough. If they keep the actual calculation like they keep it now. Critical chance, 25% with a 2.0 critical multiplier. That is relevant on secondary weapons because we have Prime Pistol Gambit and Prime Target Cracker. So yes, it is a decent crit weapon, a fire rate of 9.38, magazine of 24, but effectively 8 shots, multi-shot of 1, reload of 2 seconds. 
a tad on the lengthy side considering how often you're gonna need to reload with the Cicaros Prime. I would put it to 1.5 seconds. Stunning speed can definitely help with that. Riven Disposition 3 out of 5, which is solid. Again, Rivens are worth for the Cicaros Prime. Status chance solid, once again at 20%. You will see a trend here. Solid, solid, solid. It's a solid Prime weapon overall. Trigger burst and the damage... Ha! <laughs> Total damage is great, 50. For a secondary weapon, that's not bad. The problem is, it's primarily impact. You're gonna have to get a Riven with minus impact for the ideal procs, but you know what? Beggars can't be choosy. And speaking about beggars, let's have a look at a standard build. And you got damage with Hornet Strike, multi-shot with Barrel Diffusion, Lethal Torrent, Critical Chance, Critical Damage combo between Target Cracker, Pistol Gambit, and then comes the Elemental combo. Now, one thing that I do need to make very clear, we are in a viral meta. That's what Digital Extremes decided at the start of 2020. And then they made the enemies on Deimos, you know, the brand new content, immune to viral. <laughs> anyway. So, in this case, I would go with Corrosive for my secondary weapons, especially if you're going down to Deimos. But don't worry, we're gonna test Viral as well. In the weapon, Plexilla slot, go, or Exilus slot, I'm still confused how this one is called, go with Steady Hands. As for your last slot, you can put a whole bunch of things here. Have a little bit of flexibility in your builds, just build to what makes the weapon better for you. For example, here's a fantastic idea. If you're building Viral, that is stunning in your speed. Actually, it's good all around. Stunning speed will get you 40% reload speed and 30% um, status chance. Solid, it goes to 50%. And the reload goes down to 1.4. Do take a stunning speed into account. A more traditional choice would be Augur Pact. Here's the problem with Augur Pact. It's only 90% damage. It's simply not all that powerful. You're supposed to use Augur Pack on your secondary weapons where you simply have nothing else to put in there or or you don't want to mess with your proc priority. Keep in mind that the four times IPS rule in Warframe that I banged you guys over the head for the last two years is gone now. Has been removed by the developer. So bear that one in mind. This is why Augur Pact is good. It's just flat damage and that's it. It doesn't mess with anything. And the choice I'm gonna recommend to you guys is gonna be Heat, because right now, Corrosive and Heat, fantastic combination, and we're gonna go with the 60-60 mod, Scorch! And we're gonna test the weapon out like so. But before we do, I want you to take a look at the proc priority. What do we got right now? Corrosive, Heat, and then Impact, Puncture, and Slash. It's not exactly a slashing weapon. This one, we can try to make it into a slasher, by the way, not cheating with anything. But honestly, it's really pointless. I will showcase it just to make sure that everybody got the message. Level 120! Crap! Dead heavy goons. We're gonna unload upon these puppies. Like so. The performance of the weapon isn't exactly fantastic. Now, if I was to take everything shot by shot just to make sure I get full bullets on the head, you will be able to kill off a level 120 in a full magazine with the Sicaros Prime. You will get a significant buff if you go for the Prime mods, and I will showcase that as well. But for a Prime weapon, this doesn't feel all that powerful now, does it? But right now in Warframe, secondary weapons in general are not super, super strong. But as you can see, it can still get the job done in 7 shots. You might think that Viral is more powerful, and I'm wrong. Well, let's ride with Viral, right? Seeing is believing at the end of the day. It only takes a second. We're gonna remove Jolt. Sorry about Jolt. Jolt is only brought by Barrokitir. You gotta get it from Barrokitir or from the trade chat. Careful how much you pay. Check Warframe Market for more appropriate prices. Frostbite or Ice Storm. That would also be good, right? But we're gonna go with Frostbite, Status Chance, and Cold. And we make Viral Heat on the weapon, yes? Viral Heat. Double checking, double checking. We good. And then we're gonna remove the heat and we're gonna put in a plus IPS mod just to make sure we cannot properly make this one into a slash. I'm just gonna go shot by shot initially just to make sure I get all my bullets on the target. There you go. There you go. See that? I emptied my magazine and it died to viral and a little bit of slash that it did proc. In this case, in particular, right now, it's gonna be more effective, especially if you're going down to Deimos, to go for Corrosive and Heat. But if you're going essentially almost anywhere else, I would probably still pick up Viral, simply because it is that powerful right now in Warframe. The last thing which I do want to showcase, just in case you guys want to make it into a slasher, get more slash out of it, we can remove the Heat and put in Mame. Mame offers 120% slash. Will that make slash proc priority number one? Sadly not. Let me show you. Uh, hold on, actually, that will not fit. I gotta go like so and like so. There you go. Mame and proc priority number two is gonna go to slash. You can make Viral a lower priority 
Pistol, pestilence. Do I have more of them? I hope I do. Okay, so you can use, for example, an un upgraded pistol pestilence right your status chance goes down however but you will get less vital procs and more slash procs it wasn't enough it's still vital proc priority number one you can test it like so i tested it again honestly it's not really worth dropping that much status chance not in the case of this weapon and you know what a slash build for the cicadas prime is, is simply not all that viable no matter how you build it i'm gonna unload on this target Gotta get a kill, gotta unload on this guy as well, plenty of slashes, plenty of vitals, but unfortunately, even though I got 10 vitals, I got only 9 slash, even with main. Almost got a kill on the target. Once again, I would recommend you look into a pure elemental and forget about slash on this one. If you really must have slash on everything, trust me, there are plenty of other secondary weapons that will do a much better job than this at applying slashes to your targets. Now there's one more way to skin the cat, if you really really need to have slash on your secondary weapon there's a fantastic mod that was introduced with the Heart of Deimos which is quite useful and I keep forgetting to mention it. Carnus Stinger, now this one is a hybrid mod, it's gonna be offering you 90% slash, not 120, but also that all-important status chance, 60%. Proc priority with this one, however, still vital number one with a slash second impact and puncture. What you can do now is finally play with those two 60, 60 mods. So what you want to do is use a single upgraded one. We're going to go with one out of three frostbite and zero out of, um, what is it? Zero out of three pistol pestilence. If you go with one, out of free pistol pestilence like that you're still getting proper priority number one to vital and then slash you can play around with it. this is super fine tuning honestly it doesn't really matter all that much it's really up to you but i would recommend you go like so again a single point of upgrade between these two you get 72 vital it's proc priority no matter two eh? once again corrupted heavy goons level 120 let it not be said that i'm not Yes, this is a cut and edit, by the way, because I forgot about this mod again. We're gonna empty the magazine in this guy's head. This girl taking me, it's a corrupted heavy gun. Take a look at that. I didn't even need to do that. Four vital procs, a lot of slash on the target, and it should die, theoretically. Again, it's not the best slash secondary weapon, but if you really want to make it into one, there are a few options. I would recommend Carnus Stinger with the full 60-60 mod. It really comes down to how many procs you get. Look at that. You got 16, 15 slashes with 6 vitals. That time it absolutely annihilated the corrupted heavy goon. 7 slashes, 10 vitals. That should be enough to absolutely nuke it. There you go. Oh wait, I promised you guys I showed prime mods, right? I promised, didn't I? You promised, laser. Fine, fine, fine. Let's go back to corrosive with heat and we're gonna put on prime pistol gambit and prime target cracker they do make a pretty big difference from 55 percent crit chance to 71.8 and from 3.2 multiplier to 4.2 and we're gonna show the results like so just so you know exactly what you can expect with prime mods out of this secondary weapon a lot of uh, a lot more players have prime mods than they have revens i got the message which is why i'm trying to showcase how the web see that performs a lot better than before and this would be rapid fire but of course my accuracy kind of goes out the window but in actually in, act in normal missions i would definitely go for rapid fire see that again it is a significant buff from the two prime mods now finally rivens like i wanted to earlier Thank you so much for loaning me this one. It has critical damage and multi-shot. Now, what you can also do, and I forgot to mention as an option slot, right? You can go for even more critical chance on the weapon with something called hydraulic crossers. It's definitely not a bad idea on the weapon. It really comes down to your personal preference because you're not gonna see super ultra huge differences between the builds. And we're gonna test the weapon like so. Once again, we got corrosive on the weapon, but we no longer have heat. Um, the Riven took the place of our option mod. One more time, Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 120. Gonna go shot by shot, two free shot. It's dead. Ta -da -dum -pa -dum -pum. Fantastic, isn't it? Absolutely bloody fantastic. Yes, a Riven will make a difference. Are Sicarus Rivens expensive? Definitely not, my friends. Definitely not. They are worth getting as long as long as you enjoy this weapon. If this is your favorite weapon in Warframe, and I'm not judging, my favorite weapon in Warframe, my favorite secondary weapon in Warframe is the Akbolto Prime. It's a lot harder to use than this one, okay? 
It's about feel. It's about how attached you are to such a weapon. Oh, by the way, did I show you the reload? What I love about this weapon is the reload animation, but more often than not, you don't see it. Look at that. It splits from the middle and the thing jumps and you put it in another thing. It's, it's really cool. Now, there's still one more thing that we can do, bump up everything with Warframe buffs, and for that you can use a couple of frames, but my favorite, as per the usual, my friends, the ever so glamorous Lady Mirage Prime and her fantastic buffs. When it comes to Grenier, the meta is corrosive projection, and I'm assuming 99% of you guys already knew that, but if you're newer in Warframe and you're so attached to your energy siphon, like I was so attached to my energy siphon, Forget about corrosive projection, just simply play as you enjoy. You'll get a lot more fun out of Warframe like that. When it comes to Arcanes, Avenger is the most powerful offensive Arcane in Warframe in most situations. This is a bonus additive after critical chance, applying to your primary, secondary, and to your media as well. All the golden mods are farmed from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. And you know what? Eidolon hunting isn't that difficult anymore. I would encourage you to farm them. But if you don't like the whole boss fight experience that the Eidolons resemble, you can just buy them from the trade chat. As for our second Arcane, Arcane Precision is never a bad idea, my friends. This is dedicated secondary weapons on headshot. 100% chance for free 100% damage to pistols for 18 seconds. It's not to pistols, it's to secondary weapons. And we're gonna go like so and test the weapon. The little sentinel trick does not apply to secondary weapons, only to primaries. And there I fixed the fashion as well. Looks kind of cooler like that. We're gonna bump up the level to level 150. We're gonna unpause the AI so they can hit me and I can get my buffs. And now it's finally time to unleash hell upon them. We're gonna use Mirage's free ability for a massive, absolutely massive damage increase, as well as her ever so lovely clones. Now check it out. One shot. One shot, one shot, one shot. Gotta make sure you go for a headshot though, my friends. Go for the head because this being a critical weapon, you want to get that extra critical multiplier. And if you're still unclear or fuzzy of how critical chance and critical damage works in Warframe, link the cards right now. Trust me, it's a bit more convoluted than in most other games. Usually it's pretty straightforward, but Warframe, <laughs> Warframe is anything but pretty straightforward. But you know what? That's part of its appeal, or at least that's how I always saw things, that it's a bit more intricate, a bit more convoluted. And I know that the new player experience is pretty abrasive, to say the least, but it's definitely worth it. About the Cigarus Prime, though, getting back on topic, from my humble point of view, it's still a solid secondary weapon. It's not gonna make any top 10s, definitely not. It's not gonna top any damage meters, but it's so damn gorgeous. As always, my name is Blazer. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. And if you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, drop it in the comment section down below. But you can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, hey, consider supporting us via Patreon. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.